calendar, you will see the various sessions that have been scheduled. Find your tutorial session and then click on launch session as I'm doing here with the demo session. This will download a small program that you should see. Well, we'll go to another screen first and then it will download a small program in the bottom left hand of your screen that you need to click on keep and then double click on that to start the program which is a small Java application. Now you may get some messages asking you to allow this through your firewall or to confirm that this is not an illicit program. Simply click yes on these. If nothing seems to be happening these pop-up boxes may be behind your screen and you need to look behind your screen by just dragging your screen out of the way or minimizing it and making sure that none of the pop-up boxes that are asking for a response from you are waiting for that response. Then you should see that it opens up the recording environment, in lets us know that it's going to be recording the session and on the left we should see the other participants in your session. Now you can join a session up to 30 minutes before it's scheduled and I suggest you do so because once you're in there you can do things such as in the tools if you go to audio and go audio setup wizard it will take you through checking to see if your microphone works and your speakers work so that you'll be able to participate easily in the online session. Now when you're in that session if you press on the talk button others will hear you speaking and up to six participants can be speaking at once. But because there will probably be more than six of you, please remember to turn off your talk button by pressing it again when you no longer wish to speak. And as we see at the moment, the talk bar is indicating the level of my voice and you can adjust that with a little um, bezel if you need to increase the volume or decrease it to suit the other participants and yourself in the course, in the discussion. So I just press that again now and now my voice won't be being transmitted to the other members of the discussion. Likewise, I can send a video stream of myself if I have a video camera attached. And it's a little bit small to see there because it will normally show the main person speaking. But if I just drag that out and make it a little bit larger, you'll be able to see that there'll be six boxes down the bottom of the various participants talking or video streaming into the discussion and in this large black space will be the person speaking at that particular time. Turn that off again by clicking the video again and I'll just return that to the top left hand corner. There's also the chat box where you can chat messages to everyone in the discussion group or just to the moderator which will normally be the tutor. Here in the main room you'll see listed the various participants You'll be able to see whether or not they're speaking by their little microphone icon will be on or their video icon. So if I just turn those on, we can see that the video and the microphone in this case are on. I can also see that those who, who are interacting with the interactive whiteboard. So you can use a pen on the interactive whiteboard to put drawings in and share those with the other participants. You can use the camera to capture screenshots of what's on your screen and attach those to the interactive whiteboard and you can put clip art and so forth in if you really need to particularly useful for doing mind maps and other planning processes up along here we've got a box where we can actually share our desktop with the rest of the group so if you're working on an assignment and you want to share that with your tutor and the other members of your tutorial group you can go to that there or you can go directly to a web page by putting it into the bar here. But it's only a fairly simple browser and it may not show all the detail of a normal web page. I'll just go back to the interactive whiteboard. So that's the basic functionality of your Collaborate environment. There are a whole lot of other special things you can actually set up such as um, doing polls and um, a timer. Timer is always, always useful. Your tutors may wish to set the timer. We can set the timer going and set it for the 30 minutes of the tutorial. And it will count down to let us know 
when the session is finished. So that's it for the Blackboard Collaborate session. There are various other tutorials online at Learning at Griffith to assist you and also other tutorials you'll find on the internet if you really need to. But as you'll see, it's got fairly simple functionality, but it will let us have discussions about your progress and answer questions and issues about the course with your tutors during the tutorial sessions. We will also use this as a backup for our Google Plus sessions, and this is where, particularly in the chat system, you'll be asking questions for the panel in the Google Plus stream. So you'll have your video open in YouTube, watching the stream of the um, panel, and here you'll be asking questions, and we'll be watching here for questions and answering them through the YouTube video stream from Google Plus.